All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to Read the Right Thing. I'm your host, Eric. You'll have to excuse my facial hair today. This is what happens when you watch The Big Lebowski over the weekend. Richard Ford is an American author, born in Mississippi, but now lives and works from New England. I think either Maine or Connecticut. He's been known to be kind of hot-tempered, especially when he is annoyed with someone or some question. I learned this from a really good interview by DW Books out of Germany. I'll put the link to this interview in the bio. It's a really good interview. Now this writer and book, uh, The Sports Writer by Richard Ford, I actually heard about from Bruce Springsteen. Now Bruce Springsteen, he didn't tell me this personally, of course. It's not like he texted me like, hey, check out The Sports Writer. But um, over the quarantine back in April, Bruce Springsteen started broadcasting some DJ sets from his, uh, Siri- from his Sirius XM channel. Springseed would tell different stories and play a lot of different genres of music. They were really cool shows. I recommend you check them out. Each session had a different theme. And in one of the sessions, he mentioned the author, Richard Ford, and he recommends the Frank Bascombe trilogy. So it's kind of cool. Now I can say I read a book and who recommended it to me? None other than Bruce Springsteen. Reading about Frank Bascombe was like reading about the people I knew back in New Jersey. I moved there after college. I lived in Hoboken. And I taught English at a school in Newark. I can see why Springsteen recommends this book. Springsteen, I think, really likes the setting and the characters. Ford writes about the Garden State with an appreciation, but also a disdain. Sort of how Springsteen talks about in his Broadway show. You have a love-hate relationship with your hometown, and I think you have a love-hate relationship with wherever you live, really. The characters are very similar to characters you would encounter in a Springsteen song. You know, they're um, they're average American people, reflective, down on their luck, divorced, dealing with death, dreams, and whatever else this life seems to throw at them. Better to come to Earth in New Jersey than not to come at all. Or worse, to come to your senses in some spectral place like Colorado or California or to remain up in the dubious air searching for some right place that never existed and never will. Stop searching. Face the earth where you can. Literally speaking, it's all you have to go on. Indeed, in its homeliest precincts and turnouts, the state feels as unpretentious as Cape Cod once might have, and its bustling suburban with good neighbor industry mix of life makes it the quintessence of the town and country spirit. Illusion will never be your adversary here. Some critics or readers of this book would call Frank Bascombe a character that everyone can relate to, you know, an an everyman character. Richard Ford disagrees with this notion in saying that Frank is relatable, but a very specific individual. He's a New Jersey man, divorced with three kids, and belongs to a divorced men's club. Frank is a failed novelist turned sports writer who seems somewhat lost in his own life. The New York Review of Books says on the back, a reflective work that invites reflection, a novel that charms us with the freshness of its vision and touches us with the perplexities of a lost narrator who for once is neither a drunkard nor a nihilist, but a wistful, hopeful man adrift in his own humanity. Ford has written three or four books, I believe, with this Frank Bascombe character. Through the character of Frank, Richard Ford has made observations about America and life. The Sports Writer was published in 1986. This book is an intimate look at the life of a divorced man. The book starts out with Frank and his ex-wife, only referred to as ex, meeting at the cemetery where their son is buried. Frank and ex still appreciate each other, but they know they will never get back together. They'll never have another romantic relationship. And I think they both realize they have a good thing going. This narrative, it isn't overly dramatic or elaborate. It's really a simple voice. Frank could represent America, and that is why his voice is so straightforward and simple. The simple narrative doesn't mean it doesn't lack any depth in the story or the, or the characters. It's actually quite the opposite. But the narrative is easy to read and very welcoming. Something as simple as, My name is Frank Bascombe. I am a sports writer. For the past 14 years, I have lived here at 19 Hubbing Road, Haddam, New Jersey, in a large Tudor house, bought when a book of short stories I wrote sold to a movie producer for a lot of money and seemed to set my wife and me and our three children, two of whom are not even born yet, up for a good life. The story of the book mostly takes place over Easter week and weekend. 
the narrative is, is almost a series of vignettes. We follow Frank as he interacts with different people in his life. Frank belongs to a divorced men's club and is also courting another woman. One of the events of the books is a fishing trip the divorced men's club happens to be on. After the fishing trip, Walter, one of the members of the divorced men's club, convinces Frank to grab a drink. And Walter plays an important role in this story. Of the characters of the divorced men's club, Walter is the one we really get to know the most and is the most important. Frank also travels to Detroit to do a sports story on a retired lineman who happens to be wheelchair bound. On his trip to Detroit, he brings along his new girlfriend, Vicky, and she stays in the hotel. They travel around Detroit, but then they just decide to go home. Over Easter weekend, Frank meets Vicky's family. This book, it sort of reminds me of Walter Dean Howells and other realist writers. It reminds me of William Dean Howells because of how real the characters in the story are. It's about a middle-class average man and about real middle-class average man problems like the death of a child, a divorce, you know, forming and maintaining relationships, both romantically and just friendly. It's, it's very real. It reminds me so much of other realistic novels and writers. And I think many people agree that this is a, a realistic work of fiction. In another review on YouTube by a guy named David Seriog, I hope, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, I'm probably not, I learned about the term dirty realism. So he mentions that the book is realistic, but also fits the subgenre of dirty realism. The term dirty realism was first introduced by Bill Buford, who was an American journalist and writer. He has a new book out called Dirt that I'm actually interested in. And Bill Buford says, they write about the belly side of contemporary life a deserted husband, an unwed mother, a car thief, a pickpocket, a drug addict, but they write about it with a disturbing detachment, at times verging on comedy. Frank is a solitary character, but not a recluse. Frank wants to get on with his life and not be defined by his past. Frank, I would say, is easy to get along with, but he sees the truth in himself, his situation, and in other people. He doesn't see the world through rose-colored glasses. He kind of sees it and tells it how it is neither a nihilist nor a dramatic positive thinker. He simply does his best to handle each situation. Some might find him cynical. Others might find him hopeful, depending on who you are. Reading a character like this, for me, was very refreshing and cathartic. The book, The Sports Writer, it touches on subjects of love, death, marriage, divorce, and also escaping your past. Most of the characters are trying to escape in one form or another their past and who they are. Each character handles it in a different way. Some handle their past better than others. Frank has a hope for his future and a hope for his relationships. His friend Walter from the club, I guess you could say, is teetering on the opposite. This character, Frank, he also has many thoughts on writing literature versus writing sports writing. There's one passage I personally like about Frank's thoughts on travel. A sports writer will travel the country a great deal going to different events and games. So here is Frank talking about travel. For several months now, I've not taken a trip, and the magazine has found plenty for me to do in New York. It was stated in court by Exus sleazeball lawyer, Alan, that my travel was the cause of our trouble, especially after Ralph died. And though this isn't technically true, it was a legal reason X and I invented together. It is true that I have always loved the travel that accompanies my job. Vicky has only seen two landscapes in her entire life. The flat, featureless gloom prairies around Dallas and New Jersey. A strange underworldliness these days. But I will soon show her the Midwest, where old normalcy floats heavy on the humid air, and where I happen to have gone to college. It is true that much of my sports writer's work is exactly what you would think. Flying in airplanes, arriving and departing airports checking into and out of downtown hotels, waiting hours in corridors and locker rooms, renting cars, confronting unfriendly bellmen. Late night drinks in unfamiliar bars, up always before dawn, as I am this morning, trying to get a perspective on things. But there is also an assurance to it that I don't suppose I could live happily without. Very early, you come to the realization that nothing will ever take you away from yourself. But in these literal and anonymous cities of the nation, your Milwaukee's, your St. Louis's, your Seattle's, your Detroit's, even your New Jersey's, something hopeful and unexpected can take place. A woman I met at the college where I briefly taught once told me I had too many choices, 
that I was not driven enough by dire necessity. But that is just an illusion and her mistake. Choices are what we all need. And when I walk out into the bricky warp of these American cities, that is exactly what I feel. Choices of plenty. Things I don't know anything about, but might like are here, possibly waiting for me, even if they aren't. The exhilaration of a new arrival. Good light in a restaurant that especially pleases you. A cab driver with an interesting life history to tell. The casual, lilting voice of a woman you don't know, but that you are allowed to listen to in a bar you've never been in at a time when you would otherwise have been alone. These things are waiting for you. And what could be better? More mysterious, more worth anticipating. Nothing. Not a thing. It's probably another reason why Springsteen likes this character. He could probably see a lot of himself in this character. Springsteen would have been traveling all through America and perhaps even felt similar things. I know I, f I feel the same way. I love how he says... You can't get away from yourself. The old adage goes, no matter where you go, there you are. I really love Frank's feelings towards traveling. He's ready for anything. He's ready to t tackle anything that comes up. And he, you can tell he enjoys the simple pleasures of life. Good lighting, in a, good lighting in a restaurant, hearing a woman's voice at a bar, things like that. And I'm the same way. I love things like that. One of my favorite things to do is go to a restaurant in the summer and as you're leaving the restaurant, it's just about to get dark and the lights are on and it's warm and you're full and you just have this euphoric feeling. It is these types of observations that I really enjoyed in this book. Now let's get to some dislikes. Did I have any dislikes? I could never tell what time period the book was supposed to be set. It was published in 86. I think I assumed the story had probably taken place in the 80s. Maybe I just missed something in the beginning that was a tell. It was obviously pre-cell phone and internet, but I couldn't tell what decade it took place. But maybe that's the point. Maybe the story could have happened in any decade in modern America. After reading The Sports Writer, I love the realism and the character of Frank. I'm definitely going to read more Richard Ford, and I actually already have my copy of Independence Day, which is the book that follows The Sports Writer. So I look forward to reading this. And um, have you read any Richard Ford? Have you read The Sports Writer? What did you think? If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like or subscribe. I post videos pretty frequently. I hope you enjoyed this review of Richard Ford's The Sports Writer.